So roughly what we're going to talk about, what VATSIM is, why you should sort of get involved and what it, how it changes your flight simming experience. Uh, going to define a bit more about what the southeast is and, and show you sort of the organisational pyramid. Uh, we're going to discuss what you need to actually own in order to get onto VATSIM. How we then, once you're on VATSIM, give you the skills, knowledge, confidence to go out and be a, an active member. And then we're going to signpost, as I said, to some new member materials and resources specifically aimed at you guys. So VATSIM in its goal is to sort of make things a little bit more realistic. I'm sure that if we've, any of us have spent five minutes in Flight Simulator, we've heard the really horrible American guy who makes you file an IFR flight plan to go anywhere, cancels your flight following if you don't reply to him, and is really kind of very rigid air traffic control provider. Now, there are a few add-ons that can change that, make it a bit more realistic, but there's nothing more realistic than having an actual person on the end of the line who, as well as being able to give you instructions and separate you from other traffic, can also say, OK, here's some advice of how to continue with some troubleshooting. You know, you've got somebody there who's actually a part of the experience with you. And they're providing, we're providing, realistic ATC procedures. So if you go into our stand today in the port cabin where you're registered, you'll hear Callum and Chris currently giving Shoreham ATC. And if you tune into the scanner, it will sound something like what they're doing on the scope. What it will also do, whether you want it to or not, is develop your skills. It will help you to do multiple things at the same time in flight sim, as well as concentrating on the flight sim. You've got to be talking to other people. You've got to be thinking about and reacting to the instructions that you're being given. And it will then introduce you to a whole other different set of the flight or sit, different set of uh, operations that you had no real, or maybe you didn't have any real knowledge of before you stepped onto that sim. Because we do take things a little bit seriously. We do do SIDs and stars. And we do give you know, challenging approaches and holding happens when it, we have events. And our VATSIM servers follow the real weather always, so you'll be flying in real weather, although you can disable it, but we, we encourage you not to. And you will be flying in busy airspace. It, it kind of does sound like London when you're tuned into a London frequency. OK, we're not dealing with 42 London sectors. We're dealing with four, but the traffic densities are getting close to what you would expect. Uh, there is a small disclaimer at the bottom. Those of you who do decide to go away from here and try VATSIM, it is slightly addictive, and we don't take any responsibility for any relationships that are damaged because you're going to enjoy, enjoy VATSIM. <laughs> so what is VATSIM? VATSIM is a box. VATSIM is a box in the middle of America which you connect your PC to, and so do some other people, and you can see them all together, and that's great. You can do that already in lots of different places, connect your flight sims together, everybody flies together, and you all see each other's aircraft. But then we, we have to remember that VATSIM is just a box. And on the other side of the box, we've got controllers. They're busy looking at the blips, trying to make things work out. <coughs> and we can all see and share the same data. The controllers can see each other. They can coordinate in real time about real people that are happening on the other side of the uh, box on the, VATSIM, uh, on the pilot side. And when you're all connected together, when the pilots are all connected and the controllers are all connected, the box sort of disappears, that's why I got rid of it, because you kind of, it's kind of so seamless that you don't really notice that there's a server and an exchange, and it's almost like everybody's just connected to one another when you're all on the network. That's when the network works. It does fall over sometimes, so you have to bear with it. But the overall picture is that you've got this environment in which all the aircraft can see each other, and all the controllers can see all the aircraft, and all of the controllers, and everybody communicates fairly seamlessly to each other. Um, that's really what it is. You'll experience it if you, if you manage to get online and you, you have that experience and you kind of go, well, this is quite amazing. I'm talking to a guy who's in Cardiff who's controlling at Stansted and I'm flying, but I'm in, you know, and you've got these, ho these whole interacting experiences that everybody's going through, but you're all doing it for sort of in a common virtual airspace. It, it's kind of quite nice when you actually experience it. Um, I think the next slide might be for Matthew, but I can't remember. Oh no, where does the southeast fit in? Okay, so southeast is part of a big pyramid. At the top of the pyramid, we've got the worldwide organization, that's VATSIM. Below that, we separate ourselves out into roughly continent sized regions. So we're part of VATSIM Europe. And then inside Europe, we've got three different divisions we've got Russia, we've got the UK, and we've got the rest of Europe. So just that itself kind of shows you just how big VATSIM UK is as a part of Europe. It's got 8,000 active members at the moment and it is a sizable chunk of 
it's the biggest country uh, apart from Russia in terms of membership. Uh, so we warrant our own division, uh, and the rest of Europe um, sort of all stick together, and they uh, uh, they govern themselves. It's not to say that we're separate. We just have different policies across once you go across the channel. Uh, and so within Vatsim UK, we split ourselves into different regions, geographical regions again, and we are the southeast. Although I don't have a logo for the southeast. Um, and so, yeah, next slide. Um, our key airport in the southeast is Gatwick, obviously. It's one of the most uh, manned airports in the world. Um, every week in Vatsim, we have a competition uh, to see who can be online the most, basically. We call it the Iron Mike. And so far this year, we've won quite a few times. I decided to put them all in just to kind of brag a little bit. Where did they go? Can I go back? Oh, I had 11. We had 11 at Iron Mike's anyway. So if you think about the number of weeks we've had already this year, we've, got, we've had about 36 weeks or something, and we've won the most online position in the whole of that sim 11 times. So we're quite impressive in that terms. And in terms of our traffic figures, which is the other part of the equation, it's okay having ATC online and just sitting there and being quiet and just building up the hours. But in terms of the actual traffic that we have at Gatwick, we're the fourth busiest airport in the world this year. Since April, we're the second and actually since June, we've been the busiest airport in the world, which is phenomenal considering what sort of facilities we have there in terms of the, the geographical <coughs> runways and the popularity with actual real world airlines. I mean, we're beating Heathrow, Los Angeles, New York. We're beating all these places. But it's not all about Gatwick. And I imagine most of you probably won't head straight for Gatwick. We do spread our training around the smaller airports around the, um, with the RTS. So we train quite heavily in the Thames area, which is London City and Biggin Hill. Um, we also train down in the Solent area, which is Bournemouth and Southampton. And then also Shoreham, of course, is uh, where we uh, open quite regularly um, because we have quite a, fanatic, a local fanatic, I would say. Uh, so quieter airports are important because it encourages us to bring controllers through the ranks. That way it's no good throwing them in at the deep end and watching them flounder. And the same, it's, it's the same for new pilots as well. We don't want to throw you in at the deep end, put you into a situation where you, you don't feel confident and you're not you don't have the skills and knowledge to go ahead and have an enjoyable flight, which is what it's all about, really. Uh, next slide might be Matthew. Next slide is Matthew. Okay, yeah. So Matthew's just going to talk a little bit about what you need and then how we develop you, your skills once you get online. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. As uh, Chris said, I'm uh, an S2 uh, tower controller uh, within the region, and I control uh, London City and Gatwick Airport. I'm also... Uh, a mentor at London City and Gatwick, so um, I take a hand in training uh, new students up uh, to get to their uh, tower rated position. Um, basically, what I'm here to sort of like talk about the next few slides is how easy it is to actually connect to VATSIM because uh, some of the problems we found is that people um, have joined to VATSIM, but for whatever reason, the um, sort of like they've not been able to uh, connect to the network for whatever reason. And I'm uh, just here to tell you sort of like how easy it is and what are the steps to go through to actually connect to VATSIM. Um, so as the slide said, what do you need to actually connect to VATSIM? Well, obviously it helps if you have a computer. Uh, you need to have um, an, inter an internet connection. Um, you need to have your VATSIM membership, uh, which you uh, sign up for as a, as a pilot. Uh, all you need to do is actually register with the, um, with the VATSIM uh, network. They will give you a user ID and a password, and from that you can actually fly on. Um, for the controlling side, it's a bit more in depth. You've got to join the um, Vatsim UK region and join the individual RTSs within the UK, but uh, I'm not going to talk about that. So I'm just going to be talking about the actual getting on to fly part of it. Um, so the email address is the um, a website there as well. Uh, you also need a um, two client to actually connect uh, your flight simulator to VATSIM. We've got a couple of um, client softwares to use out there. One is called Squawkbox, which is the much more user-friendly um, client account. Um, it's very easy to connect to. FSIN is a bit more sort of like complex. It's uh, a bit, it's mainly for like the um, more um, sort of like people that are up on the uh, technology side. Um, there are uh, some, there are quite a lot of um, pros about using um, FSN. It uses a, a, a lot less memory. Um, 
the, the actual client software takes up a very small amount of screen. It's a little box, uh, so it doesn't take up the whole of your desktop. But as I said, it is quite fiddly. Um, and uh, you know, some of the functions you, you, know, you may not be able to find. Um, where Squawkbox, it's much more user friendly. Every, you know, um, the way you actually connect uh, to the network, it's very easy. It's sort of like a step-by-step -step process. Um, the only downside is that even in its minimized form, there's sort of like a big strip along the top, which uh, can get in the way, especially if you need to do lots of things like, you know, um, short finals. Perhaps you may want to look at the runaway, so uh, you need to sort of minimize that. Um, so we have the next slide, please. Okay, so as it says, Batsim is a learning environment. I'm learning all the time, even though I'm sort of like at a tower position. Um, and Batsim is a, a learning environment. Right from the word go, uh, you know, we have a very good training system. Um, we do uh, sort of like train you up as close to the real operations as possible. So uh, when somebody logs in uh, and joins the uh, uh, scheme, uh, they'll start off observing at uh, London City, which is the less busier airport. We'll sort of like give you the basics, um, you know, how to give a clearance, things like that. Um, and then you can move up to sort of like bigger fish, so like London Gatwick. But, you know, we try to, you know, keep as much to the real life procedures as possible. Um, and that includes the radio telephony as well. Um, you know, we do like to use CAP uh, 493 and 193. You know, as far as our controlling is, uh, is concerned. And like I said, we're always um, encouraging people to, to move up. Um, so the tactics one can employ, um, you can connect and listen as an observer um, for uh, people that want to sort of like connect um, on the system. And, uh, and for those of you that want to sort of like be on a plane, you can uh, connect, connect as a plane File a, a simple flight plan, so you know EGKK to EGKK, and you can actually put in the comments in your client that you're observing. And uh, like it says, they will leave you through your own devices. But obviously, you know, if you have any questions, you know, we are very open. We do like to, um, you know, get questions from pilots. So you know, ask away. Again, um, you can log in as um, an observer on the frequency without actually loading up your flight sim and I say you know uh, you know you can ask questions uh, if we're not too busy we will try and help there's um, resources on the uh, VATSIM uh, website there's the PRC which is the pilot resource center uh, which does give lots of information for um, new pilots uh, we do have uh, say so, uh, you can join a group so we do have quite a lot there are loads of virtual airlines out there that you can uh, join and they've got you know we've got quite a few um, airlines that are like affili affiliated to VATSIM uh, we do have lots of events within the RTS and within the UK organization as a whole we're always organizing um, events we had one this morning uh, which was one over to um, South Africa which was quite well attended Okay, next one. So this is our, our VATSIM Pilot Resource Centre. Um, loads of information around it. Sort of like gives uh, things like how to, um, uh, you know, how to file a flight plan, um, getting up weather information. Really, sort of like basic information for the uh, first sort of like for the novice pilot. Uh, and also, we have a very uh, list of very handy PDFs. Uh, things like flying the circuit. Um, how to uh, uh, how to tune, uh, sorry, how to put in your uh, squawk code, and here's one example here. This is how to um, uh, squawk correctly, and because as it says, when you take off, we do know if you're uh, not squawking standby or Charlie, and uh, if you're not squawking um, Charlie, we do tell you off by the <laughs> frequency. So uh, to alleviate this, Bill, uh, so Bill Casey, one of our uh, mentors, has. Um, uh, created these uh, PDFs and they're very sort of like basic. I think there's one next as well. Yeah, this is about how to fly the BF BFR circuit. Again, sort of like most of it's in um, black and white, um, really simple to understand. 
Uh, this is a, a right hand circuit, so it gives you the um, sort of like direction of the circuit, um, how to um, join overhead or from the dead side, or you know whether you're flying from the uh, east, west, or north. Pardon? What that one? Okay, yeah, so, yeah, um, so uh, another way we can encourage new pilots is um, our um, ex training, uh, well, sorry, our um, conflicts resolution manager has um, set up a scheme called uh, New Pilot uh, Member Helpers. And uh, we have a few in the, um, in the scheme, and what they do is that they're there to help any pilots that are having difficulty, um, sort of like connecting. Mm -hmm. Uh, filing a flight plan, they've got lots of um, information that they can that they can give you, and uh, that's the um, email address for them. And uh, so they're they're quite experienced um, pilots that have obviously been there and done it and seen it all before. Okay, next one. And like I said, that's some uh, stretches uh, beyond the servers. Like I mentioned, virtual airlines. Um, I'm actually a member of four virtual airlines, British Airways, Easy, Delta, and again, the virtual airlines are always holding um, events where you can do group flights on, on the network. Um, we, do, we have a scheme in place for pilot training, but as I'm aware, it's not, it's not up yet, but it's something that will be uh, quite soon. Um, again, we have um, events, real and virtual. Obviously, this is one of them. This is a real event where controllers can come. I mean, this is the first time I've actually seen um, f uh, my fellow colleagues uh, in the flesh, and yet I've been talking to them through years. So uh, it's quite a good, uh, it's quite a good way. And as I say, we also do um, virtual events as well. Uh, so we've got some communities and flying clubs. Uh, there's a group of people that sort of like go out regularly on the on the network and fly. Uh, the next one. I think it's down to Chris, isn't it? Just to uh, finish up, we just, just wanted to, to uh, if you haven't come across to see where we are, we're in the horse cabin behind us where you checked in. Uh, you can see how controllers work from the scope side. You can see us coordinating and controlling. Uh, we're there to answer any questions that you've got. Um, and you can pick up one of our shiny new informative things.